A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It's me, so good man. You better call Papa Flemmy. Um, today, a little integral competition. On the left hand side, it's left hand side for you too. Yeah, on the right hand side, <laughs> we got. The integral from 0 to 1 of log to the e power of x dx and on the left hand side, which is your right hand side, but on the left hand side, to confuse you, we got the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the log of x dx. Which one is easier? Which one can you figure out? Try it out and keep watching the video for the Jojo pose solution. And now we are going to dive right in. And I'm going to start off with the right piece of shit. This is my right hand, but this is your right. We're going to start off with this one. And pretty anticlimactic, am I right? Um, ever heard of functions and inverse functions? e to the log of x is the same as the exponential function evaluated at the logarithm of x. The logarithm is the inverse function of the exponential function. So we got function of inverse function of x is the same as the identity, so just x. Um, and well, this is just integrating x from 0 to 1, which is the same as x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. It's going to vanish at 0, evaluate at 1, 1 squared is 1, so 1 half. Um, I think guys watching. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor Preint for more cool mathematics things. This video is sponsored by Preint. More information at the end of the video. But we are not done yet. We still got log to the eth power of x. And this is not as anticlimactic as this piece of garbage right here. Because, well, that's a completely different story. We don't have the logarithm evaluated at e to the x, which would be the same as the inverse function of the function giving you the identity. This is the logarithm raised to the eth power. So this is the logarithm times the logarithm times the logarithm e times, which doesn't make any sense, to be honest. At least speaking in the natural sense of exponentiation. So how can you solve something like this? Well, the, the thing is, we, we got a logarithm here. That's a fucking piece of shit. We, we don't want it right now. This is just now a way. So we are going to introduce a little substitution. Got to. Take this to the side. We don't need this anymore. We're going to say, um, for now, let some variable t be equal to log of x. OK, so this way we are going to get rid of the log of x. But we're not done yet. We need to implicitly differentiate both sides, obviously. Giving you in the process dt, the differential one form is equal to the derivative of the logarithm, which is just 1 of x, or dx. OK, that's far as good. Now, we don't want to have an x in here because we don't have an x inside of the integral right now. So all we want to do is kind of get our differential one form in terms of x, just completely in terms of t. So the x is still in our way. So how are we going to extract an expression for just x from the original one? Well, we are going to raise both sides to base e, giving us e to the t is the same as x. As easy as that. So e to the t is the same as x. If we were to plug this into here, we are going to get 1 over e to the t dx, which would be the same as e to the negative t. But we actually don't need this expression, e to the negative t, because we still need to track it to the other side. So we are going to write everything out for now, step by step, baby steps. So dt is equal to 1 over e to the t dx, multiplying both sides by e to the t, is going to give us e to the t, dt is equal to dx. And thus, we are already done. We can plug everything into our integral, giving us the integral from where to where exactly. So we don't have 0 to 1 anymore. We introduce the substitution. Let us plug 0 into our x here. So log of 0 is going to give us, um, 
one, two, three, four, N negative infinity, okay? So <laughs> from negative infinity to, if you plug one into the logarithm, we are going to get log of one is zero. Okay, cool, so from negative infinity to zero, that looks like absolute shit. Don't leave it like that, this doesn't look good. Now, what we can do is we can now substitute our log of x as being the base, so this is t to the eth power, and then we still have our differential one form, which is e to the t dt. That looks kind of funky. I mean, double and lower bounds don't look really good. Negative infinity, never good. Um, but t to the e times e to the t, <laughs> that, that's kind of cool. Um, but how are we going to move on from here? I mean, um, we could do integration by parts, for example, but the thing is, for integration by parts, you kind of wait for something to go to zero, the, the integrand at some point, but this right here is an irrational exponent, and rational numbers don't go to zero at some point um, if we just subtract one over and over again. So integration by parts really doesn't work here, but the idea is really good to do integration by parts here, giving you kind of a recursive formula. And this recursive formula actually is something you should be really familiar with if you are a frequent watcher of this channel. It's, it's, it's the factorial. Um, but there's actually an analytic continuation of the factorial if you have things like e or pa, which is the same thing, or 2.1, okay? And the gamma function has many, many definitions, but here's the integral definition, which works well for our um, purposes, where z is strictly greater than one. And that's the only condition that we need to apply here, which, which is gonna be the case if we later take a look at the gamma function in and of itself. So that's the integral from zero to infinity, which is not good because we don't have from zero to infinity yet. Of, um, and now I need to think t to the, it shall be z minus one, e to the negative t dt. Okay, so this right here doesn't look anything like this apart from the basis which works out. I mean, the set minus one part, okay, this is something that, that we can kind of wiggle around with. It's just the argument of the gamma function. We got an E here, so we could find an expression for that. But what about this exponent right here? It already starts there. We got E to T here and E to negative T here. Not good. Also, we got from zero to infinity, which we still need here. Now, fortunately, it's really easy to turn everything around with just one little sign change. How about we put a negative sign here? This is gonna result in a negative sign here. Also, we can multiply both sides by negative one here, giving us negative t. If we put base e here, we're going to get e to negative t. Now, if we were to plug everything that we got right here into there, we're going to get negative one over e to the negative t dx. Putting everything to the other side is gonna give us negative e to the negative t dt. And don't forget, we also got negative t being equal to log of x. So if we were to plug our new stuff into here, we are going to get, also the up and lower bounds are going to change around. We did a sign change, so we are also going to change the signs on our up and lower bounds. From infinity to zero, oh, we, we failed once again. We need from zero to infinity, wait for it, okay? We're gonna be there in a second. t is gonna change to negative t to the eth power. Then we are going to get e to the negative t, but with a negative sign in front this time, dt. Okay, this is looking a tad bit better. So we got negative t to the eth power. We can break this up using rules of exponentiation. Negative t is just negative one times t, which is gonna turn under exponentiation into negative one to the eth power times t to the eth power. But what about infinity to zero? Well, fortunately, we wouldn't even need it, strictly speaking, because we can always extract negative sign from something. But we already got a negative sign placed here next to the e to the negative t. If we were to distribute it into the integral sign, fundamental theorem of calculus, turning around the primitives, basically antiderivatives, evaluated at the upper and lower bounds, we can just change the upper and lower bounds, which is really good, giving us overall. So we got negative, uh, let us start with the upper and lower bounds, turning into zero to infinity. If we track the negative sign in here, we got e to the negative t dt, which is really good. And now we got negative one 
to the eth power times t to the eth power. This is looking way better if we now track the negative one to the eth power to the outside. Then we are going to get exactly the gamma function here. But if evaluate at which point, this is the last thing that we need to find out. This right here is the gamma function, this is looking pretty damn fine. But what about the argument? Well, we need our z to be kind of in position with the z minus 1. So we need to kind of set those equal with the e. So the argument up here needs to be equal to z minus 1 in order for us to solve for z. Okay? I, I hope you can see the drill here. So as a little side note, we need to set z minus 1 equal to e. Now, how can we solve for z, which is the argument that we are seeking? Well, at one on both sides, giving us z is equal to e plus 1. If you were to plug the e plus 1 into here, the 1 and negative 1 is going to cancel out, giving you t to the e of power. It's as easy as that. Meaning overall, since this right here is thus nothing other than gamma evaluated at e plus 1, which should be the same as e factorial. I'm always mixing stuff up with the gamma function. Yeah, should be right. Co correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, then we're going to get negative 1 to the eth power times something something factorial evaluated at a rational number. Um, negative 1 to the eth power, by the way, you could use Euler's formula for that, is gonna give you a complex number overall. So overall, the solution to this problem that we got right here is also um, a complex number. Yeah, and I think this looks mighty different to lay mode one half that we got up here. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. I certainly had fun with this video. And if you are not yet familiar with things like integrals, or maybe complex numbers, or what even is the gamma function, maybe you seriously got no idea about analytic number theory and things like those, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now, this fellow right here, gamma function, I actually like it very much. That because it appears in some of my most favorite integrals ever, like this mad lad right here. Um, just because it's um, one of those instances where you take something discrete that you have learned before at school or at university and take it to a whole new level. And you notice for the first time that mathematics is more than just rearranging things and counting the number of ways. There would be the regular factorial. In normal case, if you take a look at the graph of the factorial, it's discrete. You get a point at 1, and then 1, and then 2, and then 6, and 24, and so on. But with the gamma function, it suddenly becomes smooth. You can also see things like 1 half. So, factorial of one half and so on, which is trippy to think about the number of ways to arrange one half objects. This doesn't make any sense, right? But you can get a value out of that. And this is where Preant comes in. If you want to learn mathematics, physics, computer sciences, no matter what it is in the STEM field, in a visual interpreted way, then Preant might be the perfect fit for you. Brilliant is not just your regular classroom that, that you know. The teacher is at the chalkboard like me and he's just telling you something about integrals, for example. Brilliant is all about learning visually, learning with your own two hands. Take your mouse, take your keyboard and start scrolling around. Grab yourself the graph and drag something around. Play around with the parameters, get creative. Find something out about reflections on a mirror in their physics um, in their physics courses when it comes to optics or the like. Or maybe you are more interested in quantum mechanics. No matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field, Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And their course system is just absolutely gorgeous, if I may say so myself. Just like in class, you start off very slow with a bunch of definitions, bunch of exercises, but it gets gradually harder 
And over time you're going to notice um, I have reached a point where I have learned a lot of things, but it wasn't hard on me. It was very playful. It was a great experience. And this is what my students, for example, experience too when I show them Brilliant. Just recently I was using it to um, give a concrete understanding in my class about linear functions. This is what I did. I was teaching them linear functions using Brilliant to show them what a zero of a function is. Or maybe how you can change the slope of the function to make it steeper or less steep and the like. This is what Brilliant does. You can play around with things and it spits you something out. And this something is very, very visually pleasing. And at least in my opinion, it's seriously one of the best sources to learn something new every day. No matter where you are using their app or at your PC, being at home, being at the bus, you can check it out all the time and learn something new on the go or at home. And if you want to try it out, 30 day free trial, completely free. You can try out the whole landscape of Brilliant using my link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flamblemaths. Do clicky clicky on the linky linky. And if you then think, well, that was a great freaking experience, I want to have more, then you can make complete use of my link and get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they are adding on a regular basis and how much content they are brushing up on um, also on a monthly basis. Maybe an old course isn't just to their liking anymore. Maybe they got something new added by their expert team. They are just going to renew the course and put new content into there just getting all the visuals updated and the like. It's, it's just a great service overall and I really appreciate how Brilliant treats their customers. Um, yeah, so definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel as well. It's a cool website, seriously. I, I mean it, I just like it and I'm so glad that Brilliant has been the sponsor of this channel for the past years. So yeah, it's just amazing and their team is super cool, super nice people. Really appreciate every one of them. And yeah, this concludes today's video and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Also don't forget to check out my second channel, Flemmy's Wood. And up until next week, I wish you guys a flamber day. See ya.